Hey guys, Awesome Swag 80 here, back with another Awesome Swag 80s movie review. And today, we're kicking off phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movie reviews, and we're going to be talking about Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3, yeah. Today's movie review is about Iron Man 3. And before anything, I I saw a clear parallel between me and Tony Stark. I saw how um, he dealt with the trauma of um, New York and the wormhole and aliens and him almost dying in the Avengers movie. He, how he dealt with all that trauma by going into his hobbies and making more and more and more Iron Man suits so he can protect the people he loves, which is Pepper Potts. And I, I connected a few dots between Tony Stark and me because I also do the same thing. I, I hide away from trauma. I deal with my trauma and... Um, And all the other stuff, um, uh, you know, mental stuff, you know. Um, I deal with all of that, with all of my hobbies, all of my multiple, multiple, multiple hobbies. I love drawing, I love Legos, I love working out, I love making videos, I love, um, what, uh, uh, guitar, I, uh, I love, um, um, what else do I like to do? Well, like, I like li making, like, little knickknacks, you know, like, uh, like, those little, I guess that, no, it's not, it's, it's kind of it's Lego, but, you know, like, making, like, little things, you know, and, like, traveling, um, I like collecting souvenirs, I like collecting in general, um, yeah, I just have a lot of hobbies, so, you know, whenever I'm, I'm down on my luck, which is mostly all the time, um, Whenever I'm down on my luck or feeling 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 tad bad, you know, I'm like, um, I don't want to draw today. Oh, I just play with some Legos. But I don't have any Legos. Oh, I guess I'll just make a video. Uh, I don't want to make a video today. Oh, I guess I'll just uh, uh, make a little thingy right here. I don't want to make a little thingy. Uh, why don't you just play guitar? Eh, I don't want to play guitar. Oh no, just exercise. You know, I I I always got a backup plan. I'm never uh having to think about my thoughts and the consequences of my actions and how um life is and you know the other people how i have to um and how i was a childhood and um and being enough for others and losing the one thing uh, I love. Man. Anyway, speaking of the losing the one thing that you love, um, and <laughs> uh, throughout this movie, Iron Man is like making Iron Man suits and everything. Well, not throughout the movie. But uh, he's like making Iron Man suits to protect Pepper Potts, which is the one thing, well, the one of the few things he loves, and how he deals with the, his post-traumatic stress disorder of uh, the the Battle of New York. And I thought they handled that uh, pretty well, you know, compared to I compared to Iron Man two when he was like com contemplating death and everything. How they handled that, that was good. But I feel like how they handled this with his anxiety attacks and all that, I thought that was much better and a lot more like, oh shit, he's actually going through this, you know? I thought that was pretty good. And I personally did like um, how he he's like being affected by all this, you know? He's, he's just a man in a can, like he said. And, you know, he has to go through all this, all this battles, aliens, technology, war and everything. And he just he's just powering through it like a true true uh, mad lad, you know. I, I really like how they uh, showed that in in this movie. And Pepper Potts being a good North Star to his wandering lost soul, you know, she was pretty good. Um, she, I mean, she she was there, you know. Uh, throughout the second half of the movie, she was mostly gone until 
um, Aldrich Killian needed her again. And uh, speaking of which, Aldrich Killian and the Mandarin, I feel like they are two wasted supervillains. Like, you had two supervillains, you couldn't at least get one, like, good. I feel like they're, like, mostly wasted. Uh, Aldrich Killian, he's like, uh, he's, he's a bit better than uh, the Mandarin, of course. Um, he actually has some motivation, like, I'm gonna prove you wrong, you see, I, uh, uh, you didn't, you didn't believe in me, and now, look, I'm back and better than ever, I'm gonna beat your fucking ass and take your fucking girl. Ah, ha, 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 ha. You should never, you should never mesh with the nice guy, because inside of every nice guy is two wolves, and the wolves that's gonna beat your ass is, um, uh, uh, the one that's gonna beat your ass, so don't mess with me, alright? Yeah, Aldrich Killian, he, he was a... I guess he was a much better villain. I mean, not not good or anything, but... He would, he would be a much better villain if he didn't have to be connected to the Mandarin. And him being secretly the Mandarin the whole time. And speaking of the Mandarin, he... He's, um, I get what they were trying to do but at the same time like oh, uh, it's confusing but I, it's just a waste honestly like it's such a cool character and they just wasted him for a joke and mixed him into aim and Aldrich Killian and his bad stuff um, they could have really used him for something else you know really the, the Mandarin being just a joke you know and then boom he's gone until Shang-Chi when he comes back. Both, actually, the real Mandarin and Trevor Slattery as the Mandarin's uh, little lackey, you know. Um, but yeah. I'm not talking about Shang-Chi, I'm talking about Iron Man 3, alright. And, um, kind of like Pepper Potts, uh, Rhodey in this movie was kind of, like, left out for the middle of the movie until, like, the third act. When uh, he's in the house, he got kidnapped, and then he gets out, and then he fights Tony, finds Tony, not fights, finds Tony, and then they go to the big harbor and fight and everything. Um, and then he was in the beginning of the movie just to set up his Iron Patriot armor, which is what the bad guys use to steal the president and all that. But apart from that, he's mostly an afterthought. Like Pepper in the first half of the movie, and then in the later half, they become like part of the movie, which I didn't really like that. It, they could have, like Rhodey, they could have used him a bit more throughout the movie. You know, he, he's uh, like they didn't really use him in uh, the Avengers, so they might as well use him here. You know, um, I guess this kind of ties into the PTSD thingy, but like the story and plot of the movie. It was it was it was fine. It it did what it had to do, you know. That's most of these Marvel movies. Um, it, it 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 was it was it was it was a story and it was a plot, you know. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, oh, the little kid Harley Harley Keener. I'm pretty sure that's the name. I forgot. I don't know. Um, yeah, he. I don't really know about him. Like, he was. There, he helped Tony, and then once he wasn't needed anymore, they just threw him out, you know? Until the end of the movie, where they're like, Oh my god, look, he has the Iron Man thingies in his uh, storage thingy, let me open the door. And then at the end, when Iron Man gives him, like, all his upgraded stuff, that was pretty That was pretty nice of him. I will, I will say that, that's pretty nice of him. But, um, yeah, he was just... I don't, I don't really know how to feel about him, because, I mean, he... He did help Tony, you know, a bit here and there and finding information, but apart from that, he was just like a plot tool or something, you know, like uh, something for Tony to banter off of, really. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't really know about him. He's a, uh, he's mid, as some may say. Um, I really do like how um, they have Tony in, um, you know, he's building all these Iron Man armor to, like, protect him and, and himself. But then throughout the movie, he is without this Iron Man armor. And he's put in a difficult situation, like, what am I going to do now? I don't have my armor. My armor is out, uh, out of commission, so what am I going to do now? And, of course, he, like, makes his own little, like, 
contraptions, like like a bare minimal Iron Man thingies, like utilities, with his like intelligence and his brain power, you know. Uh, so I thought that was pretty interesting, putting Tony in an uncomfortable situation, you know that you he he's been trying to build all this shit so he can be protected, but now that he doesn't have all this shit and he needs to be protected or protect the people or protect the people he loves then he he's still he's still gonna protect the people he loves he just has to find another way around which you know also shows how intelligent he is and how resourceful and um determined he is really um the cgi in this movie it's it's good it's 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 pretty good um if there is like any like bad CGI, it doesn't like take away from the immersion of the movie. So if it, I say if it doesn't take you away, then it's good. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit less than uh, Iron Man 2, but it still, it still does a job. It doesn't break you out of the immersion that much. Um, and yeah, you know, it's 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 some good CGI. You know, it's the early Marvel films. You know, they're barely getting their uh foot in the in the in the in the door you know they're like upgrading their uh, cgi game and all that <coughs> bless you and um yeah i don't really know what else to say about uh iron man 3 um i feel like yeah the iron man movies are decreasing in like how good they are and Iron Man 1 is like, wow, oh my god, shiver me timbers. You know, Iron Man 2 is like, oh, that's pretty good. But, you know, it's not as good as Iron Man 1, but, you know, it's pretty good still. And then Iron Man 3 is like, oh, yeah, it's, it's a good movie. You know, it's fun. Uh, oh, it's a Christmas movie also. It's kind of like Die Hard where it's like, it's in the Christmas time, but it doesn't really focus on the Christmas, you know, like Christmas things, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's that's pretty cool, you know. Um, yeah, I think about it, it is a pretty good Christmas movie, you know, uh, something you could watch with the family, you know, like, oh, uh, Iron Man, uh, he is, uh, dying, he's drowning, he's being crushed under his house, you know, that's pretty funny, mom, isn't that, anyway, I don't know, yeah, it's a, it's a cute little popcorn Christmas movie you could watch with the family and just have fun, you know, it's a fun movie, you know, and, um, yeah, but in terms of uh, actual movie, like compared to the other two Iron Man movies and the movies before, I'm not going to compare these movies to the movies coming in the future because they didn't have that idea in the future. I mean, in the past. So, I mean, maybe they did, but not really as concrete as they have now. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good movie. It's uh, not the best or anything, but it's it's good. It's fine. Um, like I said, the villains were pretty wasted in this movie. Um, the side characters were just needed where they had to be needed. And um, I, yeah, the main, foc the main focus of this movie is Iron Man and his PTSD, which they did pretty good. I, I would say I, I think they did pretty good. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, putting Iron Man 3 into the swagometer, I give Iron Man 3, Marvel Studios Iron Man 3, the third Iron Man movie. I don't, did you guys notice the third Iron Man movie? Yeah, there's three of them. Um, yeah, I give Iron Man 3 a solid, I don't know. Um, I know it's in the 70s, at least. Um, uh, I give Iron Man 3... Uh, 72%. Yes, Iron Man 3 gets 72%. And that's that's it for today's Awesome Fly Gators movie review of Iron Man 3. God damn, this video is long. I did not think I was going to take this long for this. Um, yeah, that's it for today's Awesome Fly Gators uh, movie review. I shall see you guys later. Mandatory kiss on the cheek. Mwah, bye. Alright, bye. Bye, 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 bye,